everyone. I'm Marcy Rogers, Education Coordinator for the Prescott Area Association of Realtors. And today we have a very special meeting with Jan Stewart, who is Arizona Association's Director of Risk Management. She'll be explaining the many broker tools and resources that AAR provides our brokers and managers. Welcome, Jan. Thank you, Marcy. I appreciate it. Hello, everyone. Um, so I, I have been asked by uh, a few offices and then uh, associations to formulate uh, broker tools and resources. And so uh, as I've done that, I reached out to Marcy and said, if you think that your uh, members would be interested, I'd be happy to share what I have with them. So let's get started with what we are doing. Um, first of all, you all know about our COVID site, right? As soon as you get into our website, the first thing that comes up is COVID. And I understand that we're all getting a little tired. Uh, we're probably having some COVID fatigue here. Um, but I do want to reassure you that we're hoping, we're wishing, we're praying that soon uh, this will be something that we're not having to have a conversation about. Um, in the meantime, we need to be diligent. We need to continue to uh, do the things necessary to protect ourselves and our clients and go forward. Um, the website, the site that we have, is consistently updated. We have worked very, very hard. Sometimes it's updated, it was in the beginning, updated several times a day just to get the most relevant information, the most timely information out there to everyone. And as we've had, um, as we've had, sorry, I'm just going to discontinue something. As we've had our um, updates, uh, uh, executive orders, um, I'm sure that you've, you've all read through the executive orders, the extensions, um, the CARES program, everything that we have provided to try and educate you to practice safely um, in today's world. Um, so we also had a COVID, um, a Realtors COVID hotline, if you will. It was a very unique kind of situation where we actually had our agents they had the ability to come into a hotline uh, without their brokers and ask questions um, during this time. Uh, we did discontinue that program at the end of May, but know that there is a video up. Uh, you'll find it at the same site here. There's a video on our website. And so if you still have questions, um, Rick Mack has a lot of Q&As posted there from the things that he acquired during that period of time where they were actually up and operating. So I hope that you find that helpful uh, in the event that you need it. And of course, you can always reach out to us um, anytime you need something and you're just not quite finding it. We're so happy to um, assist you in that way. So uh, the state jumped into COVID, into the COVID arena, arena by drafting the COVID-19 addendum. Um, usable as a disclosure or at any point in the transaction, um, it's available to our Arizona Realtors, and that came out in March, I believe, March of 2020. Shortly thereafter, we did a document called the Model Certification for Property Access. And as this is a document and not a form, uh, you, could freely, um, you could freely author whatever you wanted to do, change it, add whatever you wanted to do to that document, uh, and use it in whatever way you felt would serve your clientele the best. The tech helpline. I'm sure you've all been familiar with this. I mean, who hasn't used it? I have. Um, we had the tech hotline available to us and set up, thank heavens, and running for a period of time prior to COVID. So thank goodness that there, there is the tech helpline as we all came home uh, from our offices into our homes, we had to set up a lot of new equipment and um, having the tech hotline has saved you um, hundreds of dollars, I would say, uh, annually. If you have a tech service and you have an annual fee, I know I had one previously, and I paid a few hundred dollars a year for that. I could call them unlimited, I could ask questions, but I had someone I didn't know coming into my system remotely. And that always is disconcerting. 
and the fact that they could hack back into my system later um, would, didn't feel good. So thank goodness for the help uh, for the tech line, um, the tech help line, because I've used it. It's been beneficial to me, and we know the people that are in that are using our computer remotely that are helping us with things, and you're not going to find them hacking into your system. So whether it's just your computer at home, a printer, whether it's your cell phone, um, you know they can answer questions on just so many um, so many levels. So um, please do use that service if you haven't. And the legal hotline, let's talk a little bit about that. I'm hoping that everyone who's on today is already, uh, has already registered for the legal hotline. Just very quickly, if you have not, if you're a new broker and you have not registered yet, you simply go to AAR online and you will find legal hotline under uh, manage risk. And then you just click on uh, legal hotline, the, the information comes up, you click on the form, fill out the form, send it right back to us. And then Jamila will send all of the information to you with regard to hours that they're open, the 800 number and things of that sort so that, um, so that you can freely use the legal hotline. I know um, for the hotline, if you had an outside service, an outside retainer that you needed to use to keep a legal firm available, it would be anything from $2,500 to $4,000 a year um, to keep them on retainer. And then every time you have something that needs to be researched, evaluated, uh, something that goes beyond whatever agreement you had with that retainer, then you had to pay them per hour. And so just look at the savings from um, both having the tech hotline and having the legal hotline available to you. And I hope that you all know if your agents, you know, oftentimes I get agent calls and they're very disgruntled that they can't get in the hotline themselves. Um, so I always refer them, of course, back to the broker. And I hope that the broker knows that they can be in the room at the same time you're talking to the hotline. They can conference with you. Whatever you feel best, they know the transaction. This way you don't have to perhaps uh, acquire too much information on the transaction and they can ask the question, they can hear the response. And you know that you can always have a response from the hotline, one of the opinions from the attorneys emailed to you directly so that you have that for your file and you can also send that to the other uh, side of the transaction, in other words, the co-broking side of the transaction. So now you have an opinion from the hotline based on the information that you've requested um, that you can share with them as well. And sometimes it just helps the transaction go along so much more smoothly. The broker, the Arizona Broker Manager Quarterly, I hope you have all signed up for that. Now, when I say sign up, you can have this delivered directly into your email every quarter. All you have to do is send me an email request that says, yes, Jan, please put me on the distribution list and I will have this sent to you every quarter. You don't have to come to the website and find it. It will be in your inbox. So the quarterly magazine is our di digital publication. Um, and the things that we have in the magazine, um, you know, it's current content that uh, we all have in one spot for you. So if you're looking for legal hotline Q and A's, we have the last three months all organized in, in the, um, the BMQ. Um, we also have uh, information, legal information from our attorneys who write legal articles, we publish them there. Forms updates, we publish there. So you get education on what we're doing with the forms as well. So again, if you would like to be added to the legal hotline, or I'm sorry, the uh, broker quarterly uh, called the BMQ, um, then please do send me an email. And I have sent to Marcy a resource list so she will be sending that out to everyone who is registered and she'll have it available. So going along with this presentation, every single website that I have in the present, for the presentation will be on that uh, resource page. And all you have to do is click it, okay? I have the, the topic for you and all you have to do is click it to get to that, that page that I'm referring to. And as I said, Marcy will get that to you uh, shortly, okay? 
um, in the BMQ, in the Broker Manager Quarterly, at the last page always, you will find Window to the Law. And Window to the Law is a, um, is a publication video that comes from the National Association. And so I pull something timely every quarter into our magazine so that again, all you have to do is go there and click on that page on the window and it will take you to the, to the video that I'm hoping you find timely as well. This is not just for legal professionals. It's for real estate brokers and um, managers to assist them with uh, practice compliance. So please become familiar with that. And um, they archive all of their articles so just as we do on our website, there is um, a great deal of information there that you can find uh, that will be helpful to you. The Teams Toolkit. In 2017, uh, actually in 2016, I started putting this together. We published it in 2017. Um, and so the, the toolkit, and when I say I, it was a we effort. It comes out of our department. Um, I interacted with it substantially, uh, getting the information formulated. So um, that was where the I came from. But nothing is, is done singly by anyone uh, at AAR. It's all done departmentally with our coworkers, sometimes with other departments as well. It's a, um, it's a publication that comes from all. So in 2017, because teams had become more popular and we had all these questions, um, about how it works. Uh, we had a lot of broker questions about how to formulate a team. How does that work with my company? You know, what are the considerations I need to understand in allowing a team to be in my office? So we devised this uh, team toolkit for brokers and managers, for team leaders, and also for, um, for team members. So there's information there for everyone. It was just recently updated in June of this year. We continue to uh, update for uh, any, anything that we need as far as ADRE uh, is concerned, anything that they've made changes to, um, then we, try, we refresh all of our links so that uh, everything will be available there for you. Um, have you seen Scott's scoops yet? I hope that you have. This didn't start until April. Um, this is something new that we're doing. We had Mac in a Minute, and we still have archived all of our Mac in a Minute uh, conversations. They were short, truly minute uh, kind of videos. Um, with our Scott's Legal Scoop series, um, we are doing uh, a variety, he's doing a variety of issues um, that we post, and they're three to seven minute videos, and we're trying to do um, we're trying to, to take, we, we take a list of questions and we sit down and brainstorm what would be the best things to uh, have a discussion about. What kind of calls are we getting at AAR? What questions are we being asked? And how can we answer those questions? So this, the legal scoops um, are of interest. Um, we have, I think we started in April and we have things like uh, the baffling Benzer, a uh, good topic, anticipatory breach, uh, seller's concessions and the real estate purchase contract. Oh my gosh. Um, so just go to this site, send your agents there. I think that you'll find there's a great deal of information for self-help um, uh, within, uh, uh, within that series. Broker education programs. Since this is for brokers and managers, do you all know that we have a broker to broker forum and do you know that they have monthly meetings online via Zoom? And tomorrow is the next time that it will be available. So if you're interested, if you, if you haven't uh, registered for the broker to broker forum and you would like to, please send me an email after this meeting today. I will make sure that it goes to Tatiana who uh, will register you, who admins the forum, the Zoom portion of it, and uh, we will make sure that you get registered. I try to catch it whenever I can. It doesn't always work around my schedule, but oftentimes it's there and available. Um, and it's just very, very good, timely broker 
uh, manager information. Contract conversations. So um, for a while, these were kind of hard to find. We had a whole series of contract conver conversations and you'd have to go to our Google site and you'd have to try and find where these were placed. And we now have made it so much easier. So once again, referring to that resource page that I have sent to Marcy that she's going to send out, the information on how to find this is there. And I think that, um, I think that you will uh, love the topics. Um, recently, we had one on the seller's concessions, um, as we did in the legal scoops, but this is much more in depth. This is a discussion. These are Q and A's. These are people sitting with Scott Drucker or Nikki Salgut, and they're actually going over questions that are impactful, insightful for the different forms that you use, like the Benzer, like the Cure Notice, um, like the buyer contingency form. It seems that we have a lot of questions about that, and contract conversations will help uh, resolve some of that. And don't forget, all of these things that we have out there, so the legal scoops that we have, the Mac in, the minute, in a minute, the contract conversations that we have, these are wonderful sites to go to for office meetings. These are your helpmate to bring a topic into the office discussion, play the video, and have a discussion with your agents about so that you're not always trying to formulate something for the meetings. Um, so many of these things are available there and easy to use. Okay, this little guy is just my reminder that I'm moving on um, and that I hope that no one has fallen asleep. Risk management is not always the uh, cheeriest of subjects. Um, you start throwing words like risk, mediation out there and people get a little nervous, but please be reassured that um, this is nothing scary. We're there to help you to um, push off that risk uh, and keep you guys safe as we practice. So I don't know if you knew that there was a rookie um, video available uh, on the website, but there is indeed. So when you're hiring new folks, and especially with COVID now, and maybe they're not in the office as much, maybe you're not um, interacting with them in the same way that, that you did formerly when you had them come in, um, please have them go to this site. And it talks about how an Arizona realtor, uh, success for an Arizona realtor. And it's just a short video, but it does talk about the forms and the things that um, are available to them uh, from, from uh, AAR. And then that's followed by a smart series, a video series. I was doing this presentation the other day and Nikki Selgut, our, um, our associate uh, general counsel, happened to have been on listening to it and she said, Jan, you're talking about things I've never seen on the website. And I said, great, I'm hoping that our members feel the same way. So the SMART series are seasoned agents, and we have dozens of videos that they have produced that are um, helpful practice tips. And um, they talk about uh, different issues at different times in the transaction. And I find, it, I find it very helpful to refer people here. It's not just for rookies. This is for agents who have been practicing a while and they want a refresher, they want to update. Um, go to this, uh, this, these videos and find what the experienced uh, agents are saying that uh, you can put in your bag of, of, of tricks, your tools that will help you um, as you go along. I hope under business services, you have all found the Realtors Value to You flyer. Uh, this flyer is, um, it, it, this flyer you are able to use, this is your marketing tool. Um, when you go to the website uh, under business services, you will find this as their first item, click on it. And you'll find that you're able to um, you're able to brand this document. In other words, it can say uh, ABC Real Estate Company, Jan Stewart Realtor, um, and I can put that information out there as I'm using this flyer to send to the public for my value as a realtor to the public. Uh, it's really a wonderful tool. Um, all the instructions are there at the website. 
as well as the flyer and um, please help yourself to that information. Another thing that uh, people don't seem to find is that we have a value proposition on our website. If you, um, as a broker and manager, have ever been asked for your value statement, why should a realtor join your company? You would offer them your value statement, right? So this is a value proposition or statement um, to sellers and buyers on behalf of a realtor, on behalf of the agents. Um, this, the information that they have, they have like 12 different topics um, on the, under the seller's portion, for instance. Uh, it talks about, um, it talks about a variety of things that you do in the transaction and how they're handled, what your services are, so when you get to that one of those 12 items, there's a pull down menu and there are eight or 10 other statements there. So you could very easily do a cut and paste with this information, an agent could, and develop their own value proposition to sellers and to buyers. And while we're talking about um, value proposition and what we offer the, um, the buyers and the sellers, make sure that you uh, remind your agents to use the critical date list as more than just a reference tool for timeframes. The critical date list is also a value proposition, if you will. It talks about everything that's going to go on in the transaction in a timely fashion, and it demonstrates everything that the agent needs to do during that, uh, during that transaction by both enumerating what the, what the objective is and what the timeline is. And so it's another demonstration of really, would you ever want to try and go it alone as a for sale by owner and do this? Or would you, you know, you need a real estate agent, you need us. This is another, this is another value that we offer and this is what we do once we have your property listed or we're representing you as a buyer. So um, be sure and, and um, mention that in your office meetings and take a look at that uh, critical date list again. Arbitration requests. Um, getting back to the money again, I'm, I hate to dwell on it, but your association does save you a lot of money with all of these wonderful tools. And arbitration is another one. Can you imagine every time you have a transactional dispute that comes to the brokerage, can you imagine having to hire an attorney? And I'm not just talking about your E&O, but to have to hire an attorney or for the agent to resolve whatever dispute is going on. So between our ethics complaint process and uh, our arbitration request process, these are all services available to you under our professional standards area. Carol Ridley is the administrator of professional standards. And if you have questions, certainly you can reach out to her. But if you go to our website, to the far right, you'll find Resolve Disputes and everything is there from the get-go. So when you have a client who asks you, how do I handle this or such? You can refer them to the Resolve Dispute area and they can find out for themselves how they, about the complaint process, how they might file uh, the complaint, uh, how they might interact with a seller that they feel did not make disclosure for them. So buyer-seller mediation is also listed there and all of the information for it. Um, and again, it's, it's one of the services that are provided and it's the volunteers who make the professional standards process work. I know in your area, in your association, many, many, many of you have volunteered to be on professional standards, to be a mediator or an ombuds person, ombudsman, uh, to help members when they're having issues resolve disputes um, in an amicable way, something that um, we, we hope that we can keep in house and, and deal with in that manner. So thank you to our volunteers. And please, if you're interested in volunteering for professional standards, 
We would love to have you do that. Um, just send Carol Ridley or me, uh, since you have my email address, um, uh, the fact that you would like to volunteer, we will direct you to the information that you need to the application that you need to fill out for us and um, then submit that to us, okay? Uh, so um, remote online notarization. So when we talk about tools that help us, um, we, the, the state actually passed a law in 2019. And the law was to commence in 2020, but not until July, August, I can't remember what the date was, but it's kind of mid-year. And so with COVID, um, the date that it was going to become effective was pushed up by the governor um, in one of his executive orders so that we could start using uh, the remote online notarization. There's a couple of things that you need to think about. The first thing is your e &O. Not all e &O policies are created equal. Not all e &O companies automatically cover, I'm not sure any do, automatically for remote online notarization and any problems that might occur with that, that the e &O might be involved in. So brokers, you want to check your um, e &O policies. You want to see whether or not it is in your policy. If it's not, you want to call your e &O company, I'm sure and uh, talk to them about having a writer, an addendum, uh, something uh, that will cover your brokerage for that. And a reminder to you for your agents is that not all states have a law for remote online notarization. Many states still do not. So as our business is not just uh, in Arizona, it's nationally and for that matter, even globally, you want to know whether or not, the agent will need to know whether or not um, things can be signed remotely. So on your agent's behalf, what they should be doing um, or what they could do is start interviewing lenders and escrow uh, companies once a transaction, um, once a contract has been signed and find out from the get-go, does that lender accept online, remote online notarization. I know I've contacted a couple of lenders who do not. So then you have to do it the old fashioned way and you have to factor that in as a time issue for your transaction going forward. And the same is true as, of escrow companies. I think in Arizona, pretty much, pretty much all of the escrow companies, I probably shouldn't make that generalization, but I do believe uh, having talked to our industry partners, that remote online notarization is something that they understand and uh, can utilize. But to be safe, uh, it would be good to check. And then again, if you're going outside of the area, if you have someone who is not living in our state, um, you know, someone who is out there in another state, you want to make sure that whomever you're sending these forms to, that that, that is approved there and that they're able to, um, to uh, legally do online notarization as well. So um, I want to tell you all that you're terrific. Just the fact that you're tuning in, trying to learn about these things, um, you know, you're, you're step above, and I thank you so much for that. Um, I'm going to check the chat box, uh, if I can, and see if we have any questions. Um, and if we do, I'll try and answer those. If not, I'd like to talk about a couple other topics that are not part of this presentation necessarily. So let me see if I can get into the chat box. And it does look like we might have a couple of questions. Um, actually, we don't. So um, if you have questions afterward, please be sure and email me, call me, um, and let me know what those questions are and I will be happy to get back with you. So, you know that this is um, safety week, safety month, um, national safety month, I hope that you know that. We've been publishing a lot of information in The Voice uh, with regard to Realtor safety. And I have just attended a webinar that our Paula Monthour um, had together with Carl Carter, and I'm sure that name is all familiar to you. Uh, Carl's mother was an agent who was killed, and he has been a one-man um, 
a one man, um, what do I want to say? Um, he has been going out there sponsoring, going out there and talking to agents all over the nation uh, with his nonprofit to talk to you about safety issues, to be safe, how to be safe, um, the things that you need to do to be safe. So please, uh, when you have time, go to our website. Uh, and I've, I just added that this morning when I sent the resources out to Margie or to Marcy. So I know that it's there. So there is a direct uh, resource that goes to our realtor safety website. I will have the webinar posted there for you as soon as it's available. It's supposed to be sometime this week and I will have that up and I please, uh, I, I would hope that perhaps you even play that webinar for one of your office meetings or um, just talk it up. Make sure that agents are always thinking safety, 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 safety. And it isn't just female agents, it's male agents as well. When I was practicing in Flagstaff years ago, um, one of my, one of our uh, male uh, realtors was um, showing a, a house that had a basement in it. And he preceded the client downstairs which we know not to do, but there was a reason that he did this. Um, so he preceded the client down, down the stairs, the client got behind him, uh, duct taped him, tied him up, uh, burglarized, you know, um, took everything that he had, jewelry, whatever. Thank heavens he didn't lose his life. Um, but there he was in the basement. So these things happen. Um, you've all heard stories about it. Um, we have to, we have to remind our, our um, agents in the office, they need to remind one another to please be safe and follow safety rules. NAR has just done a survey um, that they have published. And again, you can find this on that resource page that I gave you. Uh, and in the, re, in, in the survey, it talks about nearly a third of all agents that were surveyed feeling unsafe at some point in time in their practice and um, the reasons for it. And so please uh, look at that resource. It's phenomenal, the information that you can get from that um, and the discussions that you can have in your association, in your office, with your agents. Um, and so please do uh, be careful and be safe. So one of the takeaways today, I hope that you have, is that if you need something, you contact us. Um, if you want to be put on the BMQ distribution list, please contact me. Um, if I can talk about forms for just a minute, we will not have any forms released for October, kind of a, a first or a second or a third. Um, it's rare anyway. So we do not have new forms coming out. We haven't revised a form for the October release. Uh, that's the information I'm imparting to you right now. So um, when October rolls around, you're not going to panic and say, ah, where is it? I didn't get anything. Um, that's going to be true. You're not. So let's talk about forms for just a minute and how this all works. And I'm going to use something that we're doing right now. We have a work group um, that, we have put, that, that we have put together, and it's for the exclusive um, right to sell and the exclusive agency MLS forms, and I know that that's not something that you um, that you are familiar with us doing. In other words, your MLSs provide those forms for you, correct? We are looking at it. We had a request, and it went to risk management, and risk management has put it forward. And so we have a work group who who has put together a, a statewide, if you will, ER and EA. Um, I'm sorry, uh, exclusive right to sell and exclusive agency. My acronyms get in my way. I'm the acronym queen at the office. Um, so it will be sent out to everyone to look at, to review. This isn't going to happen um, until sometime late in September. Um, and it will go to the loop. And the loop is a group of agents and brokers who have agreed to review new forms that we are generating or forms that we're revising before they become an actual form that is put out. So you see how vital that group is. If you are not, or if your agents are not on that loop as such, on the reviewers 
in the reviewers group. Please send me an email and request to be put on. And as I say, as we're having these forms that are going to be going to the loop shortly, it would be really nice if you would think about that after we hang up today, after we're off this meeting, and send me an email to, um, to be included in that. So here's how we like it to work. We send you a copy of the form, it's in draft format. We would like you to review it. You send comments to me, uh, you send them back to me, and then I compile every single comment. We don't necessarily respond to you, I compile the comments. Those comments that you send in are then taken into the next and generally a last work group meeting where each individual comment is reviewed. And I'm very serious about that comment portion. So we, we believe in, in um, your ability as a practitioner to understand these forms best. And we, though something has been generated, something else could be left out. Um, something could have been forgotten or there could be a, another way to say it or do it. So please, your comments are invaluable as part of the process. And again, the way that you um, are able to do that is to just simply send me an email. Hey, Jan, please put me on the reviewers group on the loop. And um, those will start out, as I say, sometime late yet this month uh, for the forms that we are generating now. If you're interested in volunteering for a work group, Again, send an email to me, to Scott, to Nikki, uh, and say whatever work group you have coming up next, we would be, I would be very interested in um, being one of your work group members. And that gets you started in the volunteer process. It also is a, a, a very easy way to get you started in the process of the ask, if you will, uh, of volunteerism. And um, so we would certainly like you to join with us. Uh, it's wonderful right now that we're doing everything via Zoom because you're not having to travel, yay. <laughs> um, neither am I at that point. Um, and so um, we, it's very easy for you to join into that work group or to volunteer for something when you're doing it um, in your own location. And even when we come back together at a point in time, some of the meetings may be held this way versus uh, since they are statewide so that you're not having to travel. Uh, those decisions haven't been made yet, but even if you do, um, that, that time that you spend, a work group, for instance, is usually three to four meetings, period. That's all there is. And there are meetings of about three to three and a half hours. So the commitment is not huge. It's not year long. It's not vast. Um, it's necessary. We need volunteers all the time. So um, please, um, I'll stop beating my, my soapbox here and, um, and please contact us in the event that you're interested. Um, so I think that I'm done. If, um, if there's anything that, um, if there's anything that we can help you with, again, please, um, please contact us. I understand that Marcy is recording this. Thank you, Marcy. Mm -hmm. And she will send that list out to you of all the resources. She'll post it along with the video or however she can do that um, to make that happen. I appreciate so much uh, you're taking the time to come in, to listen, to learn about the um, tools and the resources that AAR has for you. So thank you very much and I'll say goodbye. Marcy, I'm gonna turn it back to you. Okay, well, thank you so much. Jan, that was very, very informative and I'm so glad we recorded it because there was a host of information on there. Um, thank you for spending your afternoon with us, even the half hour or 45 minutes that you took. That was fantastic. I think everybody in our association will really appreciate the wealth of knowledge that you provided us today. Um, I want to thank you again, and hopefully we can have you back again soon. I would just be delighted. Thank you so that very much. That would be great. Have a good day, everybody, and stay safe. Bye-bye. You too. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Jan. Bye-bye. Thank you everyone for coming. Have a good day. You too. Thank you.